Microsoft appears to have moved away from any ambitions of competing in the AAA genre defining space. In this space, quality and execution of the art and culture are key for success. And much success cannot be associated to Xbox as of late. They now seem to be locked in for smaller games, quote unquote, that gives Xbox prestige and awards. Then riddle me this. Why did you get rid of Tango Works, maker of Hi-Fi Rush? This title checked all those boxes and arguably was Xbox's best game in years. See, this appears to be a result of the APK deal in which 75 plus billion dollars need to be recouped because that's how much it costs to absorb the company. And it seems like the real prize is low overhead and massive amounts of cash to help recoup that money. So despite Tango's accomplishments, in making Hi-Fi Rush, they were cut. And anyone outside the current big money makers, pretty much anything Activision Blizzard, Minecraft, and Sea of Thieves, guess what? You're at risk. This was not what proponents or most of them of the APK deal thought would come out of this. And now they're mad. As a result, creators and influencers are being confronted about their support of the APK deal and why they foolishly sold it to the public. This has led to said creators claiming now that no one knew this would be a result. And if anyone states otherwise, particularly PlayStation enthusiasts, they are making it up. There was no way for them to know. And on that today, my friends, why that's why we made this video and we are calling cap. But before we go any further, do us a huge favor, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button and rock those bells for notifications, please. So yeah, we're calling cap on that, meaning that these Xbox influencers primarily and these salt mine creators that were targeting people who had issues with the APK deal that pre-warned them that this stuff would happen. We told y'all why we did not want this deal to go through. Now, don't get me wrong. There were some rabid fanboys on the periphery that just want to see Xbox fail, but those were the minority. The majority of people, even pro PlayStation people, even pro PlayStation people who troll Xbox regularly, the majority of people did not want this to go through because they knew the bigger damage that it would do to gaming, right? And that is twofold. What was the damage it was going to do to gaming? First is it was going to lessen the competition. So even if I'm a PlayStation fan, I know that I need to keep PlayStation on its heels as far as creating the best content they can continue to make possible. And they only do that when they feel like if they fail to do so. Gamers can go elsewhere. Secondly, there was a big argument versus consolidation and other regulatory practices that happen when these big conglomerate companies suck up talent and spit out the bones. Talked about that unanimous. We, we, we talked about that in, in, in unison. We talked about that in nauseam. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And for anybody to sit there and say, nobody had any clues to know what was going on. That again is false, and we're going to show you that. Let's first start talking about the issue behind competition, competitiveness, right? So many gamers said this was a problem based upon that, and I can give you some examples. First and foremost, let's start with us. Um, I say in this particular tweet that you're looking at now, I say, quote, excerpt on Twitter, excerpt from our Phil Spencer kind of funny interview live reaction video, right? And then I say, in response to this, Xbox, we don't need a console blowout. Hell, you don't even need to sell the most boxes, but damn it, compete for the sake of quality. All right, and I'm gonna leave a link to all these examples that I provide for you below too, so you can hear the audio that's included for yourself or see the videos associated. But it didn't stop at just me. My mentor, the one that brought me here on YouTube, Next Gen 720, he's always talked about what? Steel start sharpening steel, right? 
So in this particular tweet, just and this is just one example out of a gazillion where he talks about still sharpening steel, even though he's gone from favoring Xbox and favoring the output from PlayStation, he always talks about the need for there to be competition. He says, hands down, PlayStation destroyed the Xbox. I don't understand with all the money in the world that Phil Spencer, why you guys can't compete. You don't need a long show. Just show with the devs talking AAA games. For the love of God, get a get a spawn game or something. So in essence, look, I, I want you guys to get out here and, and, and buck with these dudes over here at PlayStation. We get better content that way. But it doesn't stop with me and Next Gen. I can even show you something from Porter Rock like this. Yes, Porter Rock, the guy that, that trolls <laughs> the talk smack on Xbox every day. Even he has a video out there, among other things that he said and he's posted. He has a video out there. Xbox providing weak competition is making PlayStation, PlayStation soft. Yes, even Porter Rock got something out there. But guess what? It doesn't end with him. I got one more example. Believe it or not, for those of you that are pro Xbox fans, other pro Xbox fans are contradicting you. For those of you that were Xbox enthusiasts that claimed that there were not examples out here, other Xbox enthusiasts say otherwise. It is even well known as you can see here in this tweet that even King Thrash constantly talks about competition now on this tweet they're, they're trying to be facetious and, and sarcastic but they know that that message has been embodied in the message from playstation enthusiasts for a very long time quote it's here it's hilarious that king thrash guy blocked me because i called him out for it said he didn't want xbox to fail he wanted it to, to compete whilst in the same breath tearing down anything positive now you know, if if I was a betting man, I would be willing to bet that one of those positives were <laughs> the APK deal, the thing that they hate now, right? But even other Xbox enthusiasts knew this. So that's cap. But I want to take it a little bit further. And I don't want to, I don't need to show you any examples because there's plenty of them out there. I don't want to make this a receipt lesson, even though, you know what I'm saying? People are trying to talk against reality. The other issue, which was consolidation, I'm just going to point to one person, all right, because this person has been snipped and taken out of context so much and has been ridiculed and mocked, but they were spot on. And that person was Reed Forge Gaming. Shout out to Reed Forge Gaming. Um, a lot of people said a lot of negative things about him, said he was just hating on Xbox and he was trying to grow a fan base. But meanwhile, this guy, like many of us, started on Xbox, loved Xbox and just wondered where the hell the competition was. And then Reforged Gaming is also a big proponent against consolidation because they've seen what it does. When you have these big conglomerates suck up these development studios, somebody has to go. Because there's redundancies made. There's a redundancy created when you have these companies absorbed. And the people that got to go don't necessarily have to be bad. You got to pick the, the best out of the two. But you can't have redundant positions. And so what happens is you have development talent that gets tossed. And it's not so easy to go get a job. Because now you have having all this conglomerate activity happening. And all these uh, positions being purged. A lot of this talent that was making some cool stuff, like you'll have people at Tango Works that'll never find a job in gaming again. And that's what this consolidation does. We've been arguing this for years. There's too much content out there f uh, about this. I talked about it. Others have talked about it. But I'm going to give flowers to Reforge Gaming. Check him out. He's talked about this extensively, exhaustingly. And guess what? By all accounts, it appears like he was right. So I, I know what people are thinking. You guys are hearing this and you're like, MM, we know your background, right? You're the Stadia guy. How dare you say this? You were so positive about Stadia. We were telling you that it was going to die because of Google Graveyard and you didn't listen. So how dare you do this? And look, I get to where, and I've owned up to it the moment that they died. I get to where 
people will try to draw parallels between what's happening with Xbox that has over a decade <laughs> of false promises and an up and starting um, sector of a conglomerate, but an up and starting one at that that doesn't have any other business ties or whatever and collapsing after a couple of years. You can try to draw the parallels all you want, but they don't exist. I mean, I, I will definitely own up and be transparent to the fact that we, we weren't connected to the history of ABC's corporate board at the time that that google was absorbed it there was a lot about google that a lot of us may have not understood right and we didn't we weren't we didn't educate ourselves on their tendencies right and yes i can also admit that in my doomsday scenario which i gave regularly in my doomsday scenario i said look at worst i felt like that if 2023 wasn't a breakout year Stadia could be at risk in 2024. I was a year off. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And I've also talked often about we don't know what's in boardrooms. I don't believe it. I don't see it doesn't make any sense to me. I, I, I don't think that the, the platform is at risk until they try to merge with YouTube. And if that doesn't work, then I would feel like they're at risk. But anything's possible because we're not at the board. But here's the bigger differences. Number one, um, look. You cannot compare our mistake due to the lack of information in the willing full ignorance or versus the willing full ignorance that people exhibited with Xbox. For example, though Google was known for purging a lot of apps, their track record was better for paid services. That's a fact. And when you do a comparison of killed by Google versus killed by Microsoft, they still got a crap load of apps that they've both destroyed. OK. Also, again, we don't have decades long track record with Google already having a blueprint for success and then abandoning that blueprint because they got corporate uh, greed mongers <laughs> that just want to suck money out of this and not respect the art. You know what I'm saying? And not make money through the art like how PlayStation and Nintendo were doing. Right. You don't have those type of examples. As a matter of fact. You don't have much to go off of from the Google Stadia people because they were quiet most of the time. You know what I'm saying? Opposed to Microsoft coming out here and telling you contradictory things versus what Phil was telling you. You guys believe in Phil, but not believe in the people that he reports to or the people above him. Right. We, we didn't have that dynamic when we were dealing with Stadia. And also, I can attest to, I got inside information from devs who said, look, we're confident in the support of this thing. We've had Google Stadia on behalf of ABK, I mean, I mean, ABC, which is the parent company of Google. We've had them reach out to us and say, look, we're looking to revamp our system and make it easier for you. We're in this for the long haul. What do you need from us? And that spoke a lot to the devs to where they, they, you know, spoke a lot about how confident they were in the platform making a turnaround. It just so happens that certain things happen in 2022, uh, particularly their thought process around the APK deal, and they decided to go a different route. And to prove that we had inside information like that, not only did we break the news story about this conversation that they had with the developers, but then we also broke the news story about after stadia's lifespan that google was going into google games for cloud we were we broke both of those reports before uh vgc axios anybody because we were getting legitimate inside information on the flip side when it comes to xbox y'all weren't getting legitimate inside nothing you didn't have any inside information that could that could sit there and say oh well it could justify your unwavering belief that things would get better, quote unquote. There was none of that. And 10 years of broken, empty promises, again, do not compare to what is essential to a startup sector that doesn't have any lineage in gaming and even the developers thinking, hey, look, you know, this, this, thing, this thing looks like it's going to get the support that it's needed. It's going to turn around. Two totally different things. You can't compare them. But I know you guys will try because your business acumen is so bad and your ability to facilitate 
<laughs> meaningful debates is even worse. So, yeah, give it your best shot, but uh -uh, ain't going to work. With that said, here's my conclusion. Content creators led you astray, and now they're trying to find a parachute out of their burning plane. All right. And those content creators fit into two buckets. The first bucket is those that were guilty um, of creating these silos, these echo chambers where they blocked out any facts that were quote unquote negative. When you do stuff like that, I don't think you get a pass when that negative information completely impacts what's happened and that contradicts in entirely what you said. You just got to take those lumps. I'll re reference back to myself. I just, you know, even though there's not there's not similar parallels, I said out my own mouth that, hey, look, I, I don't see anything that says that Google Stadia is at risk this early. I share anything's possible, but I still doubt it. But I don't get to lean on the fact that I said anything is possible. And that's my escape clause. And I don't get any lumps. I got you got to catch the L's like everybody else. It is what it is. That's what you put your chips on. And that's what it is. And you're being held to account. And there's nothing wrong with being held accountable. I was held accountable for me saying, you know what? I'm confident that this thing, and that wasn't the case. You got to do the same. But secondly, there's those that are just being totally disingenuous. And that's these creators that felt like that, hey, I'm sharper than the listening public. I'm going to take advantage of them during this Xbox boom on social media. They knew something like this was coming, but they didn't think it was coming this soon. And they felt like when it was starting to come, they would be able to see it in advance. It appears that they weren't as sharp as they thought they were. So here's what it boils down to. You as the listener, you have to learn how not to get so roped in to quote unquote likable characters that are trying to give you fraudulent information or false hope just to pilfer you and fleece you. For your super chat money and your your ad revenue this is the internet people scheme every day to deceive you and honestly there's so much you can play victim because when the facts are right in front of your face are we to blame them or are we to blame you that's it from your boy. Let me know what you think about all this in the comment section. But looks like I always say, here's what I think. But if you did like what I had to say, check out the links below to follow me. They'll lead you to Geeks, Hard Knock Digital Culture, Cloud Dosage, and here, MM2K Gaming. Till next time, have a wonderful gaming day. Peace.